Hey guys, Mr. Bobit here. Second to last video on all the merit stuff, but we're looking at 2.12 algebra. This time around, all the merit questions from that 2019 exam. And you'll notice a big thing for 2019 is we've gone from three, four merit questions to five merit questions. So they, they've slowly started to add more merit and merit stuff in this exam. So question number 16 um, from the website. Let's get into it. It looks a bit messy, but we've got a quadratic webinar to solve it. So let's start by jotting it down. 10x squared minus 27x minus 9 equals 0. There's no common factors across here. Um, and I can see the number there. So I'm going to be using the grouping method by multiplying it over here. So 10 times negative 9 equals negative 90. So I now need to think what multiplies the negative 90 adds to negative 27. Um, and hopefully you're getting the same number as me, but I'm getting negative 30 and positive 3. They add to negative 27. They multiply to negative 90. So let's split this negative 27 up based on those two numbers. So I've now got 10x squared minus 30x plus 3x minus 9 equals 0. I now factorize the first group. So they've got 10x in common, which will be 10x and then x minus 3. I now factorize the next group. They've got a 3 in common, which would leave x minus 3. That equals to 0. Big fan of this because I've got the same bracket coming up twice. So that will be x minus 3. And the leftovers, 10x plus 3, they form the second bracket. So 10x plus 3. There's my second bracket equals to 0. I'm now going to split it into its two parts. x minus 3 equals 0. So I'm going to go plus 3 plus 3 to solve this. So my first answer for x is equal to positive 3. Now I'm going to look at my next part. I've got 10x plus 3 equals 0. I've got 10x equals negative 3 divided by 10 divided by 10. We're going to get a fraction by the looks of it. x equals negative 3 over 10. And I should put a little 2 there because that's my second answer for x. On to question number 17. A plan of a rectangular garden is shown below. There's my rectangular garden. Looks like I've got some things chopped out of it over here and here. If the perimeter of the lawn is 900, sorry, 290 meters, find x. And we've been asked the lawn does not include the shaded garage or flower garden. So a little trick with these ones here is when you've got a rectangle and you've got little kinks taken out of it, you don't really need to worry about them. So this here would represent this area here, and this here would represent this part here. And the same over here, so this line would be the same over here, and same with this and this. So if we do that, I've now just got the rectangle itself because those corners kind of pop out um, to form that rectangle. So when I set up my equation, it's going to be two lots of the base plus two lots of the length. That should equal to 290 meters. The base would be x plus 3 up here. So that would be 2 times 8x plus 3. And we're going to then add 2 times the length. That's going to be 6x plus 2. And they combine to get 290. I'm now going to expand. I'll use my rainbow method to expand all of these. Um, so I've got 16x plus 6 plus 12x plus 4 equals 290. I've now got 28x plus 10 equals 290. So I should note at this point here, the equation looks really, really messy. And you're going to be thinking, geez, how am I meant to do that without a calculator? But in MCAT, the equations will always end up being really easy. And I'll show you what I mean by that. At this stage here, we do minus 10 minus 10. So 2x, oh gosh, 28x equals 280. And you'll see here, 28x, that's just going to go in 10 times. So when I do divide by, divide by, um, the math will be really easy. And that is because you aren't allowed a calculator the markers and the people writing the exam will take that into consideration. So x equals 10, my answer for that. Um, so if you see corners like this, when you're dealing with perimeter, you can just kind of pop the corners out. 
and you don't really have to worry about it. But if it was an area question, you would have more of an issue um, and you'll need to consider those parts separately. Now on to question number 18 and simplify as far as possible this thing here. It is a quadratic fraction. So when you're thinking about these quadratic fractions, 3x squared plus 9x over x squared minus 9, your main goal really is factorize the top, then factorize the bottom. Hopefully you get a bracket appearing on the top and the bottom. You can cancel those out. So up the top there, because there's no number like plus something at the very end, I know that's going to be single brackets. So let's single bracket factorize that. They appear to have a 3x in common, and that would leave x plus 3 down the bottom. Up here, um, that's a difference between two squares. So the square root of 9 is 3. So that's going to be x plus 3, x minus 3, x plus 3, x minus 3. As I mentioned, you're going to probably find a common bracket, and we've got one here. x plus 3's go away, and that there is going to be 3x over x minus 3. Now on to question number 20, and this is a fairly typical merit question. Um, I've got two fractions. I've been asked to write that as a single fraction. So I'm just going to start by jotting down the question, 8x minus 1 over 4 plus, and I guess that plus is really important because it tells you we're using the crisscross smiley face method. Um, and then the second fraction, 3x minus 5 over 3. So I'm going to start by going bottom times bottom, which will be 12. So that's going to be my new denominator. I'm then going to multiply the cross. So that's going to be 3 times 8x minus 1. I'm then going to add the other cross there, 4, 3x minus 5. So it doesn't look too bad at this stage. The bottom looks pretty simple. I'm just going to expand and simplify the numerator. So 24x minus 3, when I expand that first bracket, and then 12x minus 20, when I expand that bracket. And that there is over 12. I now group those terms together. So that's going to be 36x minus 23, and that there is going to be over 12. No common factors here, because they're annoying 23, which means that there would be my simplest single fraction. Now looking at question number 20, and haven't seen this one in merit in the other exams, but we'll be given to solve this inequality. Um, more typical of the recent exams, so make sure you're pretty happy with this. So just jotting it down, we've got six brackets, 5 minus 2x, we're then going to go minus 4, 5 minus 3x, that there should be greater than 5x plus 4. So inequality signs, I wouldn't stress too much about them, it's your same linear solving strategies, um, but we've got that little sign there instead of an equal sign. So let's start by just expanding everything, see what happens. So that times that is 30, then I've got minus 12x, then I've got minus 20, now I've got plus 12x, and that is equal, or greater than, sorry, 5x plus 20. Um, and we can see the minus 12x and the plus 12x, they cancel each other out, so 10 is greater than 5x plus 20, and this is just a really standard kind of year 9, year 10 equation. We're going to go minus 20, minus 20. So negative 10 greater than 5x. Now we're going to go divide by 5, divide by 5, negative 2, and then the x. So what this means is um, x must be less than that negative 2 value. Question number 21 and we've been asked to solve this equation. I chuckle because it, it looks really messy, but it's actually not that bad. Um, so let's jot it down. x plus 12 over x plus 4 equals x plus 4 divided by x plus 2. Um, so kind of like the crisscross smiley face method before here, I'm going to do a bit of cross multiplying just to clear out the denominators. So this is division. I'm going to move it to the other side as multiplication. And that will be x plus 12, which is the current numerator, times x plus 2, which was the denominator on the other side. 
that will be equal to, same thing here, I'm just going to shift it over. So the current denominator, x plus 4, times the denominator, which I've just shifted, x plus 4 again. I'm now going to expand all the brackets just to see what happens. So we've got x squared plus 14x plus 24 equals x squared plus 8x plus 16. The x squareds cancel each other out. Big fan of that. That means it's not going to be a quadratic. Leaving us with 14x plus 24 equals 8x plus 16. I'm now going to focus on grouping the x's together. I'm going to target the smaller one. So I'm going to go minus 8x minus 8x. That means 6x plus 24 equals 16. I'm now going to get rid of this plus 24 by doing minus 24. So minus 24 minus 24. 6x equals negative 8. I've now got divide by 6, divide by 6. x is equal to a negative 8 over 6. And if I simplify that fraction a bit more, I'm going to get negative 4 over 3. Bit of a messy process. It looks really, really complicated, but each step by itself is actually fairly straightforward, and they pull together to get us that final answer, negative 4 over 3. So longer video than the other merit ones. That's because there are a few more in this 2019 one. Thanks so much for watching. Keep working hard and good luck for your exams.